Podcast, me Adam Hunter. I'm in Canada. Uh, I'm here with one of my favorite people, one of the nicest people I know. Uh, very cynical, uh, very dry, uh, but just a good dude. Uh, Mitch Clark, how are you, man? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good, good. I want to thank our uh, our sponsor, Speedweed. Listen, people, marijuana is now legal in California, and there's no reason you should have to leave your house to get it, okay? Or your apartment or work. You, you know, you go to the dispensary, you got these hot bud tenders, you're like, try this, try that. Pretty much, you're stoned out of your mind. You get into your car, you get a DUI, now it's $20,000, okay? Or $25,000, you get a record, you get fired, your wife leaves you, your life goes to shit, okay? It, it's happened before. Maybe you're having a party, you don't have time to go to the dispensary. Maybe it's closed, maybe it's whatever. Maybe it's overnight. It's late at night, okay? Maybe people are, people are gonna rob you. Who knows, okay? However, you go to speedweed.com, they will deliver everything, whether it's CBD, whether it's vape pens, whether it's flour, whether it's CBD oil, whether it's, it's, it's indica, sativa, Obama Kush, whatever you need, they will take care of it. Uh, so that's something that you should definitely look out for. Uh, go to speedweed.com, follow them on Twitter, Instagram, also mention MMA Roasted, and you get 10%, I mentioned Roasted, you get 10% orders of $100 or more. Life is good. Uh, how are you doing? What's going on with you? I'm good. Just super busy uh, going to school, uh, wrestling with the university, uh, pro wrestling, uh, doing jujitsu. Like tonight, we're doing promotion night, so I got a jet after this and yes. go, go do some promotions and uh, working, and I'm just super busy. <laughs> Now, you went back to school, correct? Yeah. Uh, now, how much school did you have left? Uh, well, I already have an environmental science degree, so I'm doing a whole new kind of degree in uh, education. And, you know, so basically only some of my credits transferred over, so Ugh. I know. And, like, because I went from the U of S and then U of A kind of really considers themselves like a super high academic school. So like if you, if the word, if like the wording in the title was a little bit differently, uh. they wouldn't take it. And it, I tried to, I tried to fight them on it, but they, they, they just wouldn't take it. So, you know, uh, you know, but life's good. I can't really complain. Now, do people know you? Like, when you walk around campus, do they know you're in the UFC? No. People don't point <laughs> to you, like, oh, that guy's a legend. That guy's the toughest guy out of Edmonton ever. No one ever, like, no, no, no nothing. Not, nothing, nothing. I think I'm just like, I just look like the cranky old guy that has to go back to school and deal with 19-year-olds. Uh, now, how, how, how old are you now? 32. 32. Now, is it hard, like... Uh, <laughs> Cause I was, th I almost thought about that. I'm like, you know what? Sometimes I'm just like, what am I doing? I'm chasing this fucking dream. I'm, I'm it's like hard. I'm, yeah, but you're you good know. at what you do. <laughs> you, well, you were, you made the UFC and submitted Al Iaquinta and beat a lot of great guys. So you're very good at what you do as well. Uh, the part of me is like, maybe I should just go back to college. But I have like, I have a year and a half left, basically, of college. Maybe, maybe two years. But then I'm like, how am I going to make money while I'm in college? Cause that's, a, I mean, it's that's a, that's a really hard to do. How are you managing to do that? Uh, well, you know, it's just picking your schedule. Uh, part of it too is, you know, I, I went to an academic advisor. I, I, I applied for a bunch of scholarships. I got some scholarships. I have a re partial wrestling scholarship. I have, uh, you know, I have bursaries and, and awards that I get, you know, I have a learning disability, so I get, uh, fun learning disability. Uh, I actually have two. I've, um, I'm dyslexic and, and I have uh, moderate to high uh, attention deficit disorder, apparently. Oh, that, come on. That's a, really? I'm, I guess. Every kid today has that. Well, yeah, but it's a little bit differently when they're telling a 32 year old <laughs> that you have ADD, I guess. So, uh, so I take advantage of those and, you know, uh, I teach seminars. I'm, if you need a seminar, please book me. Right, right. right. Uh, uh, you so, save some money from the UFC. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, I, I made some investments, some good investments. And, you know, uh, what did it, you invest in? Uh, well, I got bought out from the gym I was at uh, that I, I was partially owned. And then, you know, uh, back home just uh, in proper stocks and stuff like that. And, you know, I missed the, the big marijuana train in, in, in Alberta and in Canada, unfortunately. So uh, actually, back to that, uh, the other last week, did yeah. you see when Jake Shields like 
printed that the Jake Shields like Twitter handle and they posted like Mitch has a warning for pot smokers and it's like you have uh, a warning? No, it, it, like it's the most ridiculous thing. I, I I was driving to pro wrestling practice, right? And I watched these two kids, like two skater kids, like with classic like a punk mohawk, and they're trying to hand a joint uh, to each other while they're on their skateboards. And you could tell that it wasn't really working, so I'm just waiting at the stoplight, and I watch them both just eat shit on the pavement, <laughs> trying to hand it to each other. And yeah. I tweeted about it because it's funny. It is funny. And he's like, oh, Mitch has a warning, and and oh, then, and, and, and you know, and it's like. That's not even Jake Shields, by the way. I don't know who's doing the, like, it's like they, who has some company, MMA Imports, I think. Yeah, yeah. And they bought out all these, like, Uriah Faber, Kat Zingano, Jake Shields, all these big yeah. fighters that have followings, and they tweet out Cyborg. Yeah. And they tweet out these these ridiculous, you know, things, these, these, these stories that aren't even, like, real stories. And, and then they sometimes, like, they actually stole one of my jokes, but they gave me credit in, they took my, one of my jokes, and they put it in, uh, I forgot what it was. It was something where somebody's fighting, somebody said that they were gonna fight recently, uh, maybe a boxer, oh no, uh, and, I, and I said, uh, oh, 50 Cent. I said it'll be his first hit in 20 years if he lands a punch. And they took that and used it as, as the actual headline of the article, and then, nah. and then credited me in the, in the article, but not in the headline. No one cares about that. No, no, one can, no, no one's even gonna even read that. I know, and I was like, that's fucking, and then I was like, ugh. But I, I don't, if I was Uriah Faber, or, unless they're making a lot of money, or Jake Shields, or Kat, they, I would not let them do that. I don't know how, what they're being compensated, but it's sort of like, you know it's not them, and it's kind of like, really? Like, I want to hear what Uriah Faber actually has to say about something, not MMA imports. Yeah, you know, like I, I like guys like Jake Shields. I follow him because I really like the way he grapples. You know, Uriah Faber, same thing. You know, he's a great fighter, lots of, lots of knowledge and stuff like that. But it was just it was a stupid thing to to put and like the thing is too is like I have a medical marijuana uh, prescription so it's like like it makes no sense and if you read any of my other tweets beforehand you realize that uh, it's just observational crappy humor that no you're very funny dude no no no, no. I follow you you're hilarious I sometimes wonder sometimes because you'll be making fun of the person sitting in front of you in class or two people ahead <laughs> or like telling you how you want to smack the teacher and I'm like is this getting back to the teacher or does anybody know it's you uh, the only because I took uh, the pack wrestling class and the wrestling coach I've, I've noticed him like a couple of them like oh, okay. well, so I, I stay away from him I, I don't I don't usually rip on him but he likes the weirdest ones, like, why are these balls so sticky in the lecture hall? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, why do you like that, Owen? And, and you know, stuff like that. It, it's just, it's, I think it's my way of kind of dealing with the fact that I feel very out of place. Nor, like, just that socially I'm, I'm awkward, but uh, just even more awkward going back to school and, and everyone talks about safe spaces and really, that ever really happens? Oh, it's uh, day one, day one lecture every every day is like this is a safe space. You can say something, and I remember uh, in my health ed, one of the instructors was saying how I remember the first day talking about safe space, and then she went on to talk about the importance of of health and wellness. How she had diabetes type type one, I think. So the the not your fault diabetes, right? And she then later on like a week later she's talking about how she loves pepsi and i'm like i don't think you get to have any of that that's that's a no thing of course and plus i don't think that, like even with the safe space in colleges like they say they have it but then if you actually are a trump supporter or you are you know you you kind of lean to the right then all of a sudden you get attacked so it really it's almost like it's a liberal safe space it's a it's a weird uh it, it it's you're only allowed to exclude if you if you have if you dig your heels in about like gun rights or, or like it's it's the weirdest thing and and I, I you know I'm very lucky the parents I had I'm very you know accepting of whatever if you know if you're Buddhist or right. or Catholic or gay or straight or you know black or white or brown or purple or whatever it's you are who you are 
I don't have to like you. I don't have to talk to you. I, I'm more worried about who you are as a person. Not, as an individual. Not, yeah. As, not as like, a, yeah, that's a, not as identity politics. Not, oh, you're black, so you're going to feel this way. You're yeah. This way. Yeah. That's, and I think that's, what we're, I think that's what everyone's aiming for is to be individuals. I mean, Martin Luther King said, you know, you'd be judged by the, you know, the, the content of your character, not the color of your skin, uh, which I just butchered. But, but, but I'm, <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, it just seems like it's, just, it's a strange, strange time to live right now. I do, I got to say, when I went to college, you know, the first time I went to SUNY Binghamton, I was so worried about being liked and popular, and I would, I go to like, I go to the cafeteria and say hi to like everybody in the cafeteria. Hey, what's up? What's up? Go to parties, forty-five minutes at frat parties, thing. and then I went to Hofstra as a junior. I didn't know anybody. I sat by myself, and I was so much happier by myself, like just not caring, not being known, not having to like put on this. It's weird. It must, it must be strange for you going back to college at 32 and knowing what you know now, being in octagons with, <laughs> with, with fighters, like being a, a man's man, being like quasi famous, and now you're going back and like you're. Are, are you going to any parties? Are you actually having fun? With, are the kids actually like you or? Uh, you know, you know I, I get along with with people who are kind of similar minded. Like especially the wrestling team, I get along with all the guys really well. And, you know, there's always one or two people in, in, in every class that kind of, you know, I really, you know, we get along really well. Uh, I don't extend myself too far. Uh, I was going to join, join a frat. I got invited to join it and I was like, you know what, <laughs> let's not do this. And I went and it was just not my thing. And they're talking about like, we'll teach you how to be a man. And like, listen, I'm at least seven years older than all of you here. And like... I've done some manly stuff. I don't need to be taught how to be a man yeah, or how I think to be like teach you how to be a man. I think uh, your last fight, you were gushing blood. Your eye was hanging out. Your <laughs> leg was broken. Your ear popped, and you're like, "No, I want to keep fighting." I, I don't think anybody in that frat could do what you did. <laughs> yeah, I would have kept fighting if they would let me. To be honest, uh, that was now. Um, I gotta ask you, wrestling team, right? So you go off with the wrestling team. Uh, well, how much do you weigh? Right now, yeah, uh, like mid one nineties. But what did you wrestle at? This year, uh, eighty-two kilos, so it's about one eighty. Now, did you start? Did you make the team? Were you first? Or did you get beat out? No, uh, I, I'm second string. Uh, the main guy uh, at eighty-two, national champion last oh, year, wow. national champion this year. So uh, you know, everybody's a great training partner. And I was like, you know, the big thing I was coming back, and I was like, uh, you know, you think that I'm getting my ass kicked every day in practice, but still, you know, I still getting better. First match, I'm like, oh, it's gonna be just like dealing with Nick. And, yeah. the, and then I take the guy down, cradle him, 15 second pin. And right. I was like, oh, that's way easier right, than right, practice. Right. So, you know, like it's a tough thing where. Is it weird though being a UFC fighter and then being second string on your wrestling team? <laughs> no, because like it, it, like all all the guys do is just wrestling. And like I, I still do jujitsu, I still wrestle, I do a little bit of boxing, you know. I, I train my butt off, but, you know, I. I it, it's just. Uh, like especially during the summer, I'm gonna really focus on a putting on the weight and b really focusing on uh, just being very freestyle wrestling specific. How many years left do you have at college? Two. Two. Oh, so it's, it's freestyle wrestling. It's Canada rules, right? Yeah. Uh, no, it, well, it's the world's rules. Like you guys have the <laughs> one weird style. I know, I know but it works for us, <laughs> kind of. Uh, okay, so you have so you have two more years of college. Now, how, what about now? This guy in your weight class, what does he have? Uh, I think he has one, maybe two. If I like, if I get super fat and go to 90 kilos, maybe I can kind of rustle off and get a spot there. Uh, I don't know if my bones can kind of support being 90 kilos considering I wrestle, I fought at 155. Wow. <laughs> wow. Now how much, now have you missed fighting? No, not really. Really? I, you know, um, I think the, the big thing is even if I do miss fighting, the amount of like the pressure that comes with it and how it makes uh, the, just like I put so much pressure on myself to perform well and it affects my family and my girlfriend so much that it's really super selfish and I'm just not about that selfish life anymore. Uh, and, and you have to be so selfish to be able to perform at the top level and I just, I can't do the, that to people around me anymore and uh, so it's kind of upon me to try and give back to fighting as much as I can. It, it, the sport treated me decently well. You know, I made it to the top level, got wins there. 
uh, did good things, did bad things, and it was all learning. So that really, when you have success, you got to give back, and that's really what I look forward to. That's why I mean that's one of the reasons why I coach wrestling. I, I would I would not be anywhere if it wasn't for wrestling. Like that was th- everything to me. Um, so and I and I'm excited. I'm excited to actually turn my garage into a wrestling room. It's like a little dojo. I'm gonna teach out of there. And uh, the last week's been pretty good since I last the last podcast. Uh, I had I went to Tennessee for the night to do the show for the military. Flew to Nashville overnight, drove three hours, get there, there's like 60 people. But there was one really good laugher. Like, she was going crazy. Almost like <laughs> we were like, you thought maybe there's something wrong with her? So, 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 so that went really well. I was happy about that. And then, you know, these guys, like, I love making the military laugh. That's the greatest. But then I had to fly back, and then I flew back to New York, I mean, back to LA from Tennessee the next morning. Stayed at like a Motel 6, you know, like a Super 8. It yeah. was like one of those things where like, you know, like, you have to be out by 11. I'm like, I'll be out by 9, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to stay here forever. Uh, <laughs> and then I had a show at the Ha Ha, which went well that night. And the next day, my, my wife threw me this huge party for my birthday. I turned 40. And all, like, it was great. It was all, a lot, CB came and all, all, lots of friends. And Joe was there. Joe was hitting on all these women. Shan and Jerry were there, guys I know. And then like Vince Pichel showed up, even though he's got a fight coming up in two weeks against Gregor. Gillespie and I was like putting the cake in front of his face like hey. uh, you're the worst that, that was kind of a dick move but it was <laughs> funny but then Eve Edwards was there and uh, Mickey Gall showed up and a bunch of uh, Jamie Kilstein a bunch of, of jiu-jitsu guys and, and fighters it was awesome it was just all like a bunch of comics friends it was one of the best times I've ever had in my life I'm, I'm like then, then my wife got mad at me I, I, I fucked up so then the next morning she's like so I'm, I'm like great thing we watched a Rocky Four at the end. She got me a, a movie theater that you could rent. She got me a popcorn machine, uh, uh, cotton candy. It, it was amazing. Everyone, it was people were you know, smoking weed. It was just, it was a blast. And then the next morning, she's just like, I get a text at like nine in the morning. Will you please clean up everything in the backyard for them to? I'm like, okay, no problem. And then I was like, I left and I forgot. So she's like, she said she got mad at me. I'm like, I'm sorry, I, have a, I gotta get a new agent. I have a new agent meeting. She's like, well, you're gonna have to get a new wife if you don't come home. Oh. So then. She came home and like she's seven and a half months pregnant, and I'm not used to her being so like big. Which sometimes as a comic, you you, you just think things and you forget that you like you're so trained to just say whatever's on your mind, and you forget that like there has to be a filter. So I see my wife's belly and I'm like, man, I'm like, wow, I think our kid's gonna be huge. And like, and did you like, say that? Yes. Oh and my then god. And she's like, what? <laughs> and I'm, I'm just saying it's just so weird that a little thing comes out of that big belly, and then I'm like, ah, oh, ah, oh. and then she's. That, that got really bad. Like that, she's like, will you sleep on the couch? And I'm like, oh, God. So I had to like, I didn't mean to insult her. I was just, she was laughing, but getting mad. But mm. then I was like, yeah, that was, that was bad. And then she, I'm like, you're my queen. And I was thinking, my dairy queen. But I, I, I didn't say that. You didn't say that one? No, no, no that, that one I, I left out. But even like for her Mother's Day, I got her a bracelet. And, um, and like I told the lady at the thing that she's pregnant, she's like, "Oh, good, because this actually you could the the uh, the, the bracelet you could adjust it for your wrist." I'm like, "Babe, I got it. It's great." But she's like, how, "Because your wrist, you could adjust the." She's like, "How big do you think I am? I'm not the stay puff, you know." She's not that. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. I love her. I would do anything for her. I, I'm madly in love with her. I'm, she's the greatest thing ever happened to me. I just have to be more sensitive, you know, because I, I think. She's not really gaining the weight. She's just pregnant. It's like not like she's just like fat, you know. Yeah. And even if she was fat, I, I like you know I would be sensitive towards that. But because it's like not it, it's natural, but not natural, you know. Mm. And I think that she wouldn't get upset about that, but she did. Well, you also have to realize that she's probably gonna be a little bit more hypersensitive and yes. like just due to hormones, and then combined with she's not used to being bigger either, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. How long have you had this girlfriend for? Uh, I think a year and a half. Wow. Maybe a year and nine months. I think actually. So, oh, almost two years. That's great. Yeah, I, I remember that one of the saddest things ever between us was when you you lost a fight to the guy from Canada. I forgot what was that guy's name? Joe Duffy. Joe Duffy. He's he's from Ireland, but he lives in Canada. Right, right, right. Ireland, right. <laughs> and then I was skyping you, and I'm like trying to make you feel better like that it was like that night I think I'm like hey man keep your head up look at you you got everything going for you you got that hot girlfriend and there was just a silence of, like, of, of sadness and I'm like wait are you guys still going out and you're like you just shook your head and I'm like fuck her it sucks anyway I felt so terrible was, so yeah sometimes like all the shit just all happens at once you know yeah, <laughs> but you know it Realistically, it, things could have could have been so much worse, you know. Um, 
And uh, you know what? It sounds weird, but it, it, I'm glad it happened. You know, I'm really happy with who I'm with now. Really like her. We both like corgis. You know, I'm going to get one and name it Banjo. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so other than that, you know, that I'm, I'm pretty happy with what's going on and what's happening with my life. And sometimes you got to kind of like go that brink of where you're going to break for to be able to build yourself up and for everything start going well again of course yeah 100 god tests you i think <laughs> and, and says like okay what do you got for me and i'm i i like there was one week where like one of the worst weeks of my life was like i there was a family member doing like a close and were doing like heroin and like with her uh with her significant other and that, that i was flipped out about that it was like one of those weeks where i went to this college to get perform and the the booker cashed my check and didn't tell me oh. and then i and then i'm like where is the check where is the check? i have it i have it i sent it never sent it i drove three hours out of the from Ch- from like chattanooga to nashville like four hours out of the way to get the check from his office he wasn't there i go to the bank to cash it they're like oh the check's back no no it's void they threaten to arrest me i get to the college to perform it's a Bible college. Oh no! And, and they tell me that like people, people either get credit for like Covenant for, or, or like my show or something. It was like one of those things, and I'm like, okay, if it's too dirty, just give me this the throat slash. And within a minute, the fucking lady was giving me the throat slash, right? And then <laughs> I get off stage, she comes up to me, ready to yell at me. The kids were all laughing, and I'm like, just before you yell at me, just so you know, the check that you made bounced, and I don't have to even be here. I'm saving your ass. Thank God that actually worked, right? Then. <laughs> Then I go visit the family member, and the person's living like a, a maniac. There's just trash everywhere. There's a dog in, locked in a closet. Just the, I, and I, I threatened to kill the, the, the boyfriend. Like, mm-hmm. if you ever do this to my family member again, I will murder you. And he's like, let's go fight outside. And she threatened to call the cops. It, 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 then, like, I get back, and then this comic punched me in the face. Sucker punched me when I got off stage, saying I stole a joke. Oh. I, tried, I turned around and punched him, like, eight times. Uh, <laughs> But it was just like one after another, and you're right. When it rains, it pours. Yeah. But I think that's, I I believe in a higher power, and I think that's just they're testing you, going all right, because if you can get through this, you can get through anything. Um, I, I think I think it develops a lot of your like, your character. You know, uh, usually the some of the most interesting people I have, they've been they've been through some shit. Oh yeah. You know, and it really develops you as a person. You know, because otherwise, if you don't have these things happen to you, you end up being like human veal where like you haven't had anything happen to you where you've just been in this like closed in box and everything's been nice and who wants to live like that no but that, you can tell by even all, and they have better, the best sense of humor is are always people that are like <laughs> strippers porn stars uh, people that have been like molested any a, any AA meeting I've done any type of drug uh, rehab center Mexicans anybody who's been fucked over by like the world and, and like and like some form or another uh, always are the best crowds best crowds um, uh, the ones that I love to perform for now let's talk about uh, some, some some stuff going on in the MMA world uh, let's talk about the, the Bellator fights that are going on tomorrow night you know about them is that 200 yes nice it's Musasi versus Carvajal ooh I, I think that Musasi is like the the biggest free agent blunder that the UFC has made you need Pretty much like fucked up Weidman. I mean, Weidman basically quit in that fight. I hate to say it, but that's kind of what happened. He's and he's one of those guys he can shift between weights decently well, even though his body kind of stays the same, kind of like bag of milkish. But you know, he's he's pretty funny too. Like I've seen a couple of his interviews with. Also, I like dry sense of humor. Yeah. But you know, he's really talented, good jujitsu, good striking, and he's dynamic. I think that he it was a major blunder on their part, and I, I'm picking him in that fight. All right, by the way, I don't, I don't think Chris quit. He just like it was weird. It was a weird situation. You know that when he got like yeah, where like it was where they didn't really establish the point down rule kind of. But Chris had him on the ground, and Chris is a great grappler, black belt level. I mean, or higher, and couldn't finish him. No. And he had his back. And he was beating him up from the from the back. So all right, so this uh, we got Michael Venom Page against David Rickles. Uh, I, you know, it's really easy to kind of pick uh, Venom Page, but I, I really like David Rickles. Yeah, I hope he wins. I, I want him to win. You know, I like his stick. Uh, I've talked to him on Twitter and stuff. He's a cool, cool guy. He's funny. He might be a little bit undersized. That's the only thing I'm kind of worried about. Yeah, and MVP does those weird things that like, I mean, he knocks people out in eight seconds that are actually good. Yeah. 
it's it it like and the way he moves is unlike so how do you find someone that kind of it's like fighting wonder boy right right how do you find someone that that's that high level at such a specific you know you know unusual martial art right so uh that that's what makes it tough and he's super explosive yeah, so I, I, I'm hoping Rickles wins. I don't like Michael Venom Page's attitude. I don't like... Is uh, it the Pokemon thing? Uh, it's not even that. It's just more that uh, he doesn't fight that often. Uh, it's almost like he just has this, like, I don't like the way he fights, really. I feel like he's not that exciting. I feel like he could be better. Then he made that whole Ronda. When Ronda got fucked up by Nunez, mm, he made yeah. a whole video, like the Ronda dance. Yeah. And... I, yeah, you could say, well, am I roasted? You're sensitive. No, I'm not. But at the same time, when somebody got fucked up like that, I'm not you know, cheering their, their loss. I, I don't do that. Uh, so I, I thought that was kind of in bad taste. And I'd also, coming from him, it's like, really? Yeah, like, who are you? Yeah. Also, I, I just want to see him fight Paul Daly. Right. I feel like that's, like, like that's what should be in – because they're in London, right? They, they should, that's what they should have had was those two fight. What do you think of that Paul Daly fight when John Fitch was punching him and he was – booing him along with the crowd uh i thought it was kind of funny to be honest i I, like i i helped paul daly cut weight and like i've cornered him in a fight i like him Uh, he's super funny uh i think he was trying to get stood up basically and also you know there's the only thing he could do was to get underneath uh john fitch's skin because he knew that his defense is good enough he's not gonna get finished and it's minute left but you know he sounded like the the old lady from princess bride Boo! <laughs> he did kind of sound like that, <laughs> but also, but Paul Daly, we know that's his weakness. Like, I, I don't understand that with certain <laughs> fighters. Like, we, okay, we know, like, even like, all right, could be right. Could be's weakness is striking. Even though I thought it was a dumb game plan when he did with Al Quinta, at least he's working on his striking. Mm-hmm. His chin is straight up, not good, but he's working on it. Where it seems like Paul Daly, his Achilles heel has always been wrestling. It's really weird because he works with, uh, what's his name, Kane Johnson, I think, yeah. uh, from Bolt Wrestling, a really super talented coach, works with Black House guys. I, I think that, you know, as soon as the bell goes, it just like, oh, I just want to knock someone's head off. You know, I want to throw that, that left hook from hell. He has the biggest fucking hands I've ever seen on someone. Like, have you ever, have you, no, like, no. I shook his hand and I was like, like, I don't have tiny hands, but like, my hands started to disappear. Like, it's like my hand plus, like an inch and a half of extra. Have you ever sparred with him? No, thank God. <laughs> uh, all right, so Phil Davis versus Linton Bissell. I got Phil Davis all day. Yeah, Phil Davis for sure. Um, I like Linton Bissell. He's a good guy. I just think I think Phil Davis is like the, the most underrated, untalked about fighter right now out there. I mean, he's only loses to Ryan Bader. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's lost Anthony Johnson, a couple other guys, but it seems like Bader is his Achilles heel. And every fight he with Bader, you could argue he won. Yeah. It, he's right there. And look how good Bader looked against King Mo. That was uh, that was nuts. I think the thing is, is it, it's he's Phil Davis is one of those guys. He just he doesn't want to talk. He just wants to work hard, you know, do his thing, and and you know, he, no one wants to push behind someone that is kind of vanilla y personality wise, right? But wins fights. Yeah, yeah. Um, also on the card. Aaron Chambers, I don't know who that is, Kate Jackson against Anastasia Yankova. That's the girl that they're really getting behind who is so beatable, but hot. Hot Russian chick, but it's like, come on, what are we doing here? That, uh, that, that was it Kate Jackson? Kate yeah. Johnson? You know her? Uh, she trains at, at Jackson's this camp. I, I know, Kate Jackson. I know, I, I know one of her friends, Carrie Hughes. She's fighting in Is Kate Jackson Denmark. good? Yeah, and like I saw her when she she fought to get on uh, on tough that one season. She's very talented, very good, good striking. So that's what makes it interesting. Is she's got good striking and she's she's big for one twenty five. I d- I don't think Anastasia Yankova is is a really big for the weight class. I think she could maybe even make one fifteen. So she could win. You think? Kay Jackson pull off the upset? I I, I I I would pick her in one of those times where you're like, hey, I'm gonna pick an underdog. I'd I'd throw some money on her. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yankova always like he's Bellator. I get it. You want to get hot chicks, but there are a lot of girls out there. I mean, you have Julia Budd. Mm-hmm. You you have real fighters. Real Not that these fighters. girls aren't real fighters, but real experienced fighters who 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 tested time. Like let's focus on them. You you know it's. My my big problem with it is it's no longer about the skill of these women that they train hard, if not harder than a lot of men I know. 
You know, it's not about the skill they bring to the table. It, it's about how they show their ass on on, in, on Instagram. Who cares? Well, then, I want to care if you're a fighter. Guys aren't tuning in for that. No. Like, there's enough porn out there. There's enough like things that you can see where you're not gonna tune in to see a hot chick fight. It, it just you're. It's not gonna be the draw. I mean, maybe it will be if a girl's super good, like a Ronda Rousey, where you're like, dude, she's fucking knocking people out in 12 seconds. Boom. But just because a girl's hot. It's not gonna, it's not gonna carry over. I mean, like that one, uh, they were saying that one UFC was like the worst. Uh, what? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's not. It's like that girl from uh, Brazil. I mean, she's the jiu-jitsu girl, like uh, Mackenzie Dern. Yeah, Mackenzie Dern. She's I, from Phoenix. Oh, from right, 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 from, right, right, right. Was from Phoenix. Like that girl, where it's like she's not ready. If a girl's not ready. To be on the main card and she's hot and you're putting her on the main card, I think you're almost doing her more disservice than service. But at the same time, it's not just with, you know, like let's let's take Mackenzie. They're doing it with CM Punk or Phil Brooks or wherever you, the artist formerly. Did you ever known. get that? How close are you getting that fight, by the way? I don't think very very close. I said it'd go up to 170. I think. Did they ever reach out to you? No. Is is uh, one coach the one with a big beard said, "Who are you?" I'm like, "Yeah, that shit doesn't get old. I hear it all the fucking time." I hear it all the time. Who the fuck is that guy? That guy? That yeah. guy yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, awesome, cool, super original. Thanks, Conor McGregor. Oh, was it, what's his name? <laughs> the, the striking, did you do Groovis? Or? No, 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 he's the, the fat guy with a beard, and he wears glasses, and he looks... Captain Lou Albano? Yeah, basically, he's Captain yeah. Lou, Lou Albano. But, you know, I, I would have fought him. I, I think that it's not really a markable fight. You get this... Do you think he beats Mike Jackson? No. I think no. Mike Jackson wins? Yes, 100%. I don't see how... Uh, how he wins, Phil, Phil Brooks wins, in all honesty. Uh, it, it's tough. Some guys are fighters and some guys aren't. And then that's uh, an unfortunate truth. Mike Jackson is a fighter and likes to throw hard. And, you know, he had a super tough matchup against uh, Mickey Gall. Mickey Gall's like world class jujitsu guy. You know, yeah. he had really good match at uh, Brown Belt against um, uh, Gordon Ryan, you know, and that was a great match. And like Gordon Ryan's tearing it up on Nogi, so you know, it, like that was a tough matchup. But I, I, I think uh, Mike Jackson for sure. Do you teach gi or no gi? I teach both. I prefer no gi. T- uh, tonight you're teaching. I'm teaching the gi because you know we kind of don't really have a full on like the ranking system unless you're wearing like the colored rash guards. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to give stripes on that though. Right, it looks weird. But it'd be cool like if Phil Brooks or CM Punk like he's fighting all of a sudden like the lights go out. And all of a sudden, like, Mike Jackson's just lying there. <laughs> like, no one knows why. Or... Just like a cha- errant chair shot. Yeah. For an object. For an object. What's your wrestling name, by the way? They, they're Right now, they're just using the Danger Zone. We got to get a better one. Well, I didn't come up with that fight nickname. It just kind of stuck, and now it just transferred over to pro wrestling. I think it just, as I'm transitioning, we'll see. What's your finishing move? Uh, Rings of Saturn. What's that? Where it's like the double, remember Perry Saturn? Yeah. Yeah, where he did like the double shoulder lock kind of thing. Uh. I did a flying arm bar in my last match, so. Now, you were looking for a jujitsu match, and there was a guy from here that like wanted to take you up on it. Was there? And you were like, I'll beat you with one arm? Oh, that's uh, uh, Mike LaRue. Yeah, I'll beat his fat ass. And is he, he any good? He seemed like he was pretty good though, right? Or is he any good? No, he's he's balding, fat old man. <laughs> I'll but he really wanted to go yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all the proceeds go to charity or to like restoring his. Is he a pro fighter? No, no. Uh, he just trains. Who was the pro fighter that was a comic? That was like his record was like sixteen and seventeen or something. It was a guy that was like I trained with him one day. He's a nice guy, but he was a pro fighter from Edmonton. A good looking guy, but I, but he just kept losing. Oh, Chris Aid. But what happened to him? Uh, he's kind of fallen off the map. He was working like at the bungee jump part in, in the West Ed Mall and then I think he was trying to try pro wrestling but he's very slight in size right uh, you know and that's that's part of why I, I'm okay with retiring is he kind of stayed around the sport way too long yeah and that's it's sad to watch people who stick around way too long and their head gets all busted up and then you know they're vegetable for lack of a better term 100% alright so now an LFA tomorrow night uh, Kevin Aguilar He's fighting Tom Lay. Uh, I like Tom Lay. Tom Lay actually, uh, he, he's really good. That guy, he did the um, the uh, Contender series. Um, and then uh, Jeremy Spoon taking on Damon Jackson. Do you know these guys? Go Spoon. Do you know him? No. Oh, uh, Ray Trujillo, 21 and 20 versus Levi Muse. And uh, 
Yeah, those are the guys I know. But, but <laughs> UFC Fight Night, we'll talk about that. Steven Thompson versus Darren Till. This fight, I, I got Till. I, I, think he's, I think he's the real deal. You know, I, I was kind of going the same, uh, same way, and then I watched some of like Wonder Boy's other shots. As long as he's not going against a counter, someone who's equally a counter puncher, he's super hard to time. And, and I'm going with Wonder Boy. I'm going to disagree. I, I think he's just, I feel like Darren Till's just not there yet. But what about that Darren Till sparring video that looked ridiculous? Like, why would he put that up? It looked like he fought a guy from Curbs or something. He just grabbed the guy. was like, let's go. I mean, he was go- kind of like that guy who gets beat up by everybody. That yeah. idiot. Whatever that guy's name is. That is like, he says he's 190 and 0 oh, or something. But yeah, I know you're talking about the, the guy who's like the boxing champion yeah, of the world. Yeah, there's something wrong with him. Like, but oh, yeah. what was that? Why was Darren Till doing that? You know, some guys, they, they, they do it. As soon as the camera turns on, they know someone's filming. They have to look good. And then, like, what? That, that goober fucking hit him with like one or two decent shots so that doesn't really bode well either way i uh there's no room for sparring like that in my opinion you know it's every once in a while you sprinkle in shit like that but you gotta save the big shots for for the fights have you ever had a guy that was going too hard on you and spar like just ramping it up and sparring yeah yeah and you, you tell them to fucking cut it out and then when they don't usually i would just uh do a calf low kick as hard as i fucking can and you know or where you teep them, right, just to below the belly button, like the snap belly, like so. It's it's. Did that happen against a, a, a pro fighter? Did that yeah, oh yeah. Who? Yeah. I'm not gonna. You're say. retired. You can, no. You can tell, was it Diego Sanchez? No, actually, you know what? Diego was one of the best training partners I ever had. I've heard, like I've I've heard people be like, oh, I don't want to go with him. I went with him. Uh, it was Diego Brando. Um, <laughs> was it really? It seems like that's the kind of guy that would do that. He he likes to spar hard all the time. That's not my thing. And it was like 10 days out. And I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm not getting caught for... Now, did he, like, when you said, I'm done, does he look, take it as like, oh, I fucking... No, he started quit? calling me, like, he started getting mad. So it was just like one of those things where, because um, I don't need an ego in the gym, I just kind of left. Uh, you know, as in, like, that's good training for some guys. For me, so close to a fight, I'm, I'm not willing to, you know, basically gamble my purse for a pissing contest. Of course. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, Diego Sanchez, one of my favorite training partners I've ever had. Are you teaching jiu-jitsu tomorrow? Uh, Saturday or Sunday? Saturday, I am. What time? 10 o'clock. Is it gi or no gi? No gi. All right, I'll, I'll go to the... Do you have headgear for me? Headgear? Yeah, because I have cauliflower here, and I had surgery on it when I was 20. I got I got headgear. It was before MMA became popular, and like my ear was like twice, three times as big as this, and kids used to call me uh, cabbage patch head, and uh, <laughs> so I actually had the surgery. Looking back, I'm like, why did I do that? But uh, yeah, so I, I it, if, if, as long as you have headgear, I'm in. Yeah, I got headgear. Uh, do you like the like the way the ones you guys wear in collegiate, or do you guys like do you like the normal ones? Uh, either way. All right, I got I got two pairs, so I'll, I'm in. I'll, I'll, I'm in Saturday morning. I'm excited. Are you going to be able to get up for 10 a.m.? Yeah, yeah. But now I'm a white belt. Is it going to be all fucking black belts trying to go crazy? No, no, it's all levels. But I, but I, but I have really good wrestling, so like I'm able to like hold my own. I just end up in the guard for, for an hour. It's like a, a lot of like technique-driven. Love it. Good. I want to tell I want to do. Learn technique. Yeah, that's the best part. All right, good. I, that, that's the best part about jujitsu, in my opinion, is you can always learn and get better. Like There's even a couple other black belts that come to my class. And, and they learn new stuff, especially with all the n- new nuances in. I just always gas out during live rolling, though. <laughs> I go like five, I go like two, two, five minutes, and I'm like, I'm good. Uh, that's, that's on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we, we got to work on that. So, all right, so what did you, all right, so now Neil Magny versus Chris White. Craig White. I, I like Magny, man. He, he's, he's, he's dynamic. He's improved a lot. He has some good wins on his record now. Yeah, no, I'm surprised he beat Carlos Condit last time. I did not see that happening. I, you know, I, th- I attribute that to, to having a really good wrestling coach. You know, he had uh, Leister Bowling, I think, was, it, was who it was. He's a wrestling superstar, great coach. And uh, they knew that that Carlos takes a little bit to warm up, and they were just on him like that the whole fight, right? So it, it was just good game planning, I think. And then also Arnold Allen, good fighter, 12-1. and one. Love that kid. It's Mads Burnell. Ooh. I'm gonna go with Arnold. Yeah, and then Makwan Armarkani. I love that guy. He's Mr. Finland. He got a blowjob on the podcast when he called in. He was having a girl giving a blowjob during the interview, and I didn't believe until he put the phone up to her. You could hear her sucking. Jesus. Uh, it's taken on Jason Knight, Hick Diaz. Ooh. 
I like that Jason Knight. I like how he fights. It may not like transition well into this fight, but uh, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick Knight. I love Knight, and Knight's got great tenth line of jujitsu. I mean, he's one of the few guys that really can like really put it in there. Uh, Manny Bernin- Bermudez versus Davy Grant. Uh, I like I like Bermudez. I like the way he fights. Eleven and zero, undefeated. Eric Spicely versus Darren Stewart. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of James Wood and those guys at Syndicate, so I'm going to go with Spicely. Me too. Uh, yeah, he came to my show wearing a jean jacket. Him and his whole team wearing jean jackets. Did they uh, have, did, were they wearing jeans? The Canadian tuxedo? Yeah. Solid. Uh, Daniel Kelly, the best 75-year-old fighter on the planet, is taking on Tom Breeze. Ooh, uh, fuck. I hate... Every time I pick against... Uh, <laughs> Daniel Kelly. Daniel Kelly wins. <laughs> Rashad Evans. He, he beat Rashad Evans. That's so fucked. Like, it makes no sense to me. But I don't get it. The guy comes in wearing a huge brace on his leg. Why aren't guys just kicking that brace off his leg? I don't know. Like, it makes no sense. He obviously has the worst knees ever. and But he makes it work. You know, his awkward striking style. He's like, he's almost so slow that it's an off-speed pitch. You yeah. know? Uh, he makes it work. You know what? I'm going to pick Dan Kelly. And then your fellow Canadian, Elias Theodoro, taking on Trevor Hot Sauce Smith. Uh, I think I, I'm, I'm gonna pick Elias, not just because he's Canadian. I think overall he's the better fighter. Uh, you like Elias? A lot of Canadians have a they either love him or hate him. I get along with him. He nice guy. Right? He's a nice guy. Uh, he sure loves him some Elias, <laughs> but you know, like I think he's kind of insecure though. I think deep down he's a little insecure. I I, I feel like he's one of those guys that like he heard that you gotta love yourself before you love someone else, and he's just like he's just <laughs> stuck up loving himself. <laughs> Also, my ex-girlfriend, well, we dated a little bit, is Gina Mazzani is taking on <laughs> Lena Landsberg. I got to go with Gina. She's a cool chick. She's tough. And her wrestling is really good. Her juice is really good. She's a big girl uh, for the what, weight class. Um, I think she beats Lena Landsberg. I, I think so, too. Uh, uh, I've, I've never met her. Oh, wait. No, I did. I met her when she fought here. Her she didn't like you, right? Didn't she badmouth you? Uh, she badmouthed it, me because she dated like one of my really good friends and and they did a long distance and then they broke up and then I'm somehow fucking part of this even though I don't know she seems yeah, nice yeah, no, she saw me she's like she caught she's like hey, I saw her for the first time and like she was hey loser heard you got engaged that was like the I was like thanks Gina uh, but she's a cool chick she's, just, she's I, cool I really like her brother Dave he's Mazzon. a big dude he's in uh, hopefully he's fighting right away for the EFC title I like him he's good shit now the biggest event of the year in Wyoming June 2nd, bare knuckle boxing. Yuck. I just saw this today. I just looked at the card today. Uh, Rico Rodriguez from Long Island. I had no idea he was from Long Island. Uh, is taking on Lewis Rumsey. What do you know about Lewis Rumsey? Anything? Uh, no. Well, so Rico, I'm, I'm going to go I'm gonna go with him. Me no. too. Uh, Rico <laughs> tapped to like a double leg last fight. Um, oh. Who else is on this card? Beck Rawlings, Rowdy Beck, taking on Alma Garcia. I don't know who Alma Garcia is, so I gotta picking go her. back. No, I'm picking, I'm picking other. But I heard it's not Baron. I heard it's grappling too. What? That's what someone said. That's a bunch of horse shit. It's gotta be boxing, right? I'm here for bare knuckle boxing. Eric Prindle taking on Sam Shoemaker. You know these guys? I know Eric Prindle. He uh, trains in Prescott. He is fucking gigantic. Like he's the guy I remember who he got kicked in the nuts, and then when he rematched the guy in Bellator, he kicked him right in the sack. <laughs> He's, he's that guy where the yeah uh, where he went to look like he was doing an axe kick to like his belly quote unquote and then he axe kicks him right in the sack. Uh, his shoulders, I like the, they're huge. Yeah, I remember I was making fun of him when I was still at the lab. I was making fun of him. He was at the lab, that guy. Well, he come down every uh, yeah. work with a couple of the heavyweights and stuff just to get extra work in. And uh, is he good? Uh, he looks like he hits so hard. Like, he, he's a big fucking guy. He's yeah. 300 pounds. And uh, he would do this thing where if you were touch sparring and you, like, landed calm, we'd be like, oh, one, two, three. That was good. And then you do it again. And it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And you're like, what's going on? And, like, I'm happy that he's not just pounding my face in the mat. But <laughs> really nice guy. I'm going to pick Prindle because if he hits you, you go down. Johnny uh, Bedford's on this against Nick Mamalis. Oh, uh, didn't Nick Mamalis, he fought in the UFC, didn't he? He did? I think so. I'm not positive. I'm going to go with Bedford. That guy's tough as nails. And then uh, Joey Beltran taking on Tony Lopez. Uh, 
Lopez. I'm gonna go Lopez. I like Beltran, but isn't Lopez like fifty? Doesn't Beltran <laughs> look fifty? And he's like, looks like his stomach. Like when he went down to eighty five and came back, it's like his stomach never recovered. So it's like a Sharpe puppy's face. Why do I want to watch this thing? I think it's because it's amazing entertainment. That's why I, I really feel like this is good. This is good for some odd reason. All right. Also, before we before you leave, you got five minutes left. So UFC Fight Night, Utica. I'm excited about this. I'm so pissed I can't go because Vince said I could walk with him to the cage. Uh, but Jimmy Rivera, Marlon Moros. Ooh. Uh, you know, I like Jimmy Rivera. He's super, super dynamic. You know, he, he can strike. He can wrestle. I, I like him. Uh, Gregor Gillespie against Vince Pichel. Gregor Gillespie is a four-time All-American. They're bringing in Vince to, like, build up Gillespie. I think Vince is going to surprise the whole world. I think the thing that a lot of people kind of forget is how big Vince Pichel is. For 55, he's huge. He strikes. He can wrestle well. He's, he, you know, he's multi-talented and just, he can mix it up a little bit better. And he has and no I, damage on him. He started fighting at 27. So yeah. Like, and he took three years off. Like, he, he has no, but Gregor Gillespie is a fucking monster. If it goes to the ground, Vince's going to be in trouble. But Vince knows that. Uh, does it help if you know that? I, I think if you can... It helps you with two things. It helps you to kind of game plan for where you want to be, like how I'm going to move to make sure I don't get taken down. Also, at the same time, is uh, it, it prepares them. I have to put in my time on jiu-jitsu, on getting up and on attacking. I don't know if Vince really likes to be a guard player or anything like that. I'm sure he just it's wants to get up and smash stuff. That's all he wants to do. So, you know, it kind of it, it prepares you in that sense. Jake Ellenberger versus Ben Saunders. Oh. Uh, uh I'm going to go Jake. I hope Jake wins. Come on, Jake. I love Ben, too, but, you know, a little closer to Jake. But, but these guys need this win. This is like the like, – like I feel like Scott Coker's going to be ringside for this one. Yeah, uh, just, just like – just, just wiping his hands together. Oh, yeah. Someone's coming. Exactly. Uh, Sam Alvey versus Gian Vellante. Uh, Gian Vellante. He's the funniest fucking guy like at that summit, he was so funny. Really? Hilarious. What was he doing? Well, he was making fun of Al, which kind of, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like someone, because uh, I nodded at, at Al, because it's yeah. just like, you know, I try to be polite as possible. I, didn't, I have really no qualms. Like I won the fight, even though he beat my ass for the first half. Uh, and he's just, hey Al, how's it going? Good, how are you? And some guy's like, who's that? And he's like, Mitch, he's, he's good. And then, Volante's just like, yeah, he beat your ass. Oh, <laughs> this is like, God. what a dick. That's really <laughs> funny. Uh, so I like v- I like Volante in this co- this one. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I just think he's too big too. Like I don't know why Sam Alvey's going to two hundred five. Yeah, he could he can go to like one fifty five. Like he's got a gut, that dude. He just, I don't know. He's, I think maybe he just has the genetics for just having a terrible body, you know? Like, it just happens. <laughs> That's going to be the ugliest fight, by the way. The Gian Vellante, Sam Alvey. Or it's only going to get knocked out in 30 seconds. If it goes distance, it's just going to be ugly. I think it's going to, like, it's going to be guns ablaze in that first round, and then after that, it's going to kind of, pace is going to slow. Lauren Murphy versus Sahara Eubanks. Big Murph. I love Murphy. She's cool. Yeah, she's good shit. I, uh, she's in a tough fight, but, you know, the biggest thing is you can never count out Lauren because she'll never quit on herself no she's a fucking former heroin addict like died seven times already she's got nothing she fears nothing she's a You're, badass yeah she's ripped too she, yeah and she, I, I, I like her at this weight class and uh, yeah she's awesome go go Lauren Nick Lenz versus David Tamor ooh ooh that's a uh, I'm gonna go Lenz he's got that that tough he's got a tough style for some guys you know just with the good with wrestler relentless Tamora's pretty good, though. Oh, 100%. I, yeah. I, I hope Lenz wins. I like Lenz. Uh, Jody Escobar. You train with her, right? Yeah, you right. know, train around her at, uh, at Jackson's. Versus Jessica Aguilar? Hmm. I, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with Jody. She's... Uh, I think she's a better striker. Uh, I, I just feel like Jag missed her... She missed where she was at her best unfortunately 100% when it was her fighting was, yeah. yeah and then finally uh, Jared the monkey god Brooks like him against Jose Shorty Torres just got signed you know who that guy is? yeah yeah uh, he was it's about time yeah he's so good uh, I'm gonna go with Shorty Torres unfortunately he is, it's he's uh, he's got a lot of hype behind him the only thing you gotta worry about is those like the, the quote unquote octagon jitters you know he's been wanting to go there for to 
to fight in the UFC for so long, and uh, I, I feel like it's going to be like it, it's tough. Like there's all this pressure on you, especially after saying I want to be in the UFC, I want to be in the UFC. But you know, he might be one of those guys where he used that to just propel himself to be so much better. Did you ever have octagon jitters, Mitch Clark? Hundred uh, percent. What fight? Uh, John Cholish. Uh, I remember after we we hit a roll, he went for a shitty knee bar, and when we got up, I was like. Holy shit, my hands and legs feel like they're filled with lead. Really? It was awful. That's, that's, so you, just, you feel heavier? It was just like I couldn't move. Like, and, and like the, the ending sequence of that fight, he, hits, uh, he went for like a Kimura trap, and I was looking to spin around uh, to hit an armbar, or he took my back. So that was like a 50-50. Whoever got there first, was gonna, he got to my back and fucking flattened me out and started hitting me. But you won that fight, right? No, I lost. I oh, lost. Wow. Um, and... Uh, I just remember I was like so tired to try and get over to try and, and hit that armbar move I know I know like more trap you know uh, and it was just it was so debilitating knowing that it could have been better and the next day Joe Silva I'm in the in the van with him to ride to the airport he's like I could see just like you were doing good doing good and then he just hit the wall and it, it wasn't like I was in bad shape I was in good shape I was ready to go but you know it's just one of those things where uh, emotionally and mentally I wasn't I don't know if I was I I was prepared properly for such a big event. So what do you have coming up? Uh, I got seminar uh, June 9th, and then... Where? Got, Where can people see the seminar? People have to know about Lloyd it. Lloyd Minster. Okay. And if you're in Prince Albert, like, I just had one cancel. If you're in Prince Albert, June 2nd, tell them, tell ADP, LDP to rebook me. Uh, and then, you know, I got pro wrestling in July 7th. Where? Uh, Monster Pro Wrestling in Edmonton, Alberta, at, uh, Alberta Ave. So come check it out. It's an outdoor show, and all yeah, ages. All ages. S- super fun. I, I I really like pro wrestling. It's super fun. Nice. Uh, next, for, but me uh, Monday, Tuesday I'm at the Dime Bar. Next uh, Thursday night I'm in Dexter, Maine, doing a show in Dexter, Maine uh, at some at some pub. Uh, you can go on the website. <laughs> it's on the website. Uh, coming up in in June. Um, uh, I'm back in Edmonton at the end of June and July. I uh, July Fourth weekend. I'm at the uh, LA Comedy Club at the Stratosphere. Hit me up for comps in Las Vegas that whole week, Monday through Sunday at the Stratosphere. Uh, yes. So thank you, Mitch, for coming on the show. I know you got to get to class. And uh, thank you all listeners. Take care. Bye bye. Tune is on the hook, Jim Dorpotan. Tather stole and Dorpotamoro. Tather stole and Dorpotamoro.